بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم My dear students of Ajman University College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences uh, Dosage Forms 1 course uh, I welcome you to our third topic and that is about tablets uh, This topic is very important uh, it will be included in the final exam uh, it's uh, uh, the longest topic that we will talk about uh, so you need to pay attention uh, as we do always with uh, the topics that we discuss the first thing we talk about here objectives or the learning outcomes from this topic now the first learning outcome is for you to identify and differentiate between different types of tablet dosage forms. This means that tablets are available in different forms. So you need to know the difference and the use or advantage and disadvantage of uh, various types of tablet dosage forms. Is and differentiate between them know the advantages and disadvantages of uh, different tablet dosage forms additionally you need to be acquainted and knowledgeable about the different ingredients that are used with uh, tablets uh, different ingredients i'm talking here about the inert ingredients or what we call them we call them as excipients so what are these inerts and why do we uh, use them when we prepare compressed tablets? Here we are talking about compressed tablets because they are the main uh, form of tablets available in the market. Now also you need to learn about different coating types that we apply in the coating process to tablets. These coatings can be uh, functional coatings or just plain coating. So you need to know about the coating process and the types of coating and how we do them. Also, you need, as with uh, every topic, you, know, you need to know about the quality standard tests that are applied to tablets. Uh, United States pharmacopoeial requirements are important in this regard. Uh, it's not only the United States Pharmacopoeia that, that is available uh, for this purpose. We have other pharmacopoeia uh, requirements such as those in European Pharmacopoeia, British Pharmacopoeia, Japanese Pharmacopoeia, Indian Pharmacopoeia, there is the International Pharmacopoeia. There are different pharmacopoeia and we need to address one of them when we prepare uh, tablets uh, in these tests one of them is weight variation test and the other one is uh, content uniformity test so you should be able to differentiate between these two tests and when do you apply weight variation test when do you apply content uniformity test also you need uh, to know about the inspection the packaging and the storing of the tablets yani the storage conditions for uh, tablets you remember that capsules needed uh, appropriate storage conditions otherwise the shells of the capsule will be ish, affected whether by the dry conditions surrounding the capsules or the moist or high humidity conditions conditions surrounding the ash the capsule okay so we always talk about the learning outcomes of any topic and then we start with ash we start with the definition uh, tablets are solid dosage form as the case with capsules and as the case with powders and granules but as with capsules we started uh, defining tablets as unit solid dosage form and you already know why we call it unit it's because each tablet represent a unit 
and it also represents each, each tablet represents uh, a dose of the drug. It's like divided powders between brackets. So we define tablets as unit solid dosage form. طيب. طبعا, of course, it contains the drug and usually with other suitable pharmaceutical excipients. The same the case with capsules, حكينا, in which the drug and other additional ingredients ish, are contained within hard or soft gelatine capsules. Here, again, the drug is formulated with other pharmaceutical excipients and the way you prepare it is by usually compression is and primarily tablets are prepared by what's the answer compression Lish, why is there any other way what is the other method okay uh, i will answer this uh, you don't have to do it as a homework but the other way is molding يعني عن طريق القالب نحضر التابلتس we prepare tablets in molds إذا في عنا molds قوالب these molds uh, the tablet will take the shape of the mold okay okay some tablets as you see here in the figure some tablets are ايش Grooved, I grooved or scored. شو يعني grooved? Grooved يعني محزز. Scored, similar uh, term. Scored or grooved. زي ما انتو شايفين هون في عنا score. Why do you think we have in some tablets these scores? The reason is to allow them to be broken easily into two parts, as you see the case here. Uh, the score here allows allows two parts to be uh, uh, to result upon breaking if there are other scores it allows more parts to be uh, broken or to be uh, to result from breaking the tablets depending on how many scores normally we have one score as you see here that's why some tablets are having scored uh, or grooved surface Okay, we will talk about the types of tablets, and here we will talk about the compressed. Why? There is another uh, type of tablets, here molded tablets. But because most tablets are produced by compression, that's why we will focus on these types of tablets. Uh, before we talk about these types, we need to talk about tablet formulation. So, tablet formulation, in addition to the drug, it contains adjunct. Adjunct, يعني something to help formulate the drug, to make the drug suitable, but it is inert. doesn't give the action. طيب, the first diluent, uh, the first ingredient here, inert ingredient, is the diluent. Now, remember what we talked about in capsule. Now, the most common reason for adding diluent is to increase the bulk or let's say to increase the, the quantity that we deal with in the machine. The machine needs to compress the tablet. Uh, if the amount of the drug is very small, say one milligram, okay, in this case, the tablet machine cannot deal with one milligram. Maybe at least it needs uh, 60 or 120 milligram for the tablet machine to be able to deal with the powder or with the granules. So what do we do? We ish, we mix the drug with diluent. طبعاً, the diluents, as you have studied in uh, capsules, can also help in improving the flow but it's not glidant. We don't call diluents as glidants because they are not specifically used to do that. Actually, glidants are material that are able to improve flow in very small uh, uh, quantity. Yani, for example, 1% of the whole formulation uh, using glidant will improve 
its flow. But when we talk about diluents, we are using it in higher quantities, sometimes even much more than the drug itself. Then we are increasing the bulk of the powder, allowing the machine to be able to deal with the formulation. Also, the diluents uh, will improve the properties of the powder in terms of its flow, its compressibility. Type the other uh, group of ingredients that we may uh, need is uh, the binders or adhesive. And here I want you to remember uh, the topic about powders and granules. If you go back to this topic, uh, you remember when I was talking about granulation, wet granulation, if you remember, I, I said that we add binder, it's a material that usually dissolves in water and we use water as a vehicle and we add this uh, vehicle containing the binder, we add it to the powder mixture in order to wet the mixture and bind the particles together to allow us to age, to form granules, isn't it? Allow granulation to happen by sticking the particles together is in the binder will help in gluing or sticking the particles together allowing granulation also there is additional thing now uh, after granulation uh, you will have the compression and compression stage involves the compression of granules will granules will be containing ish the binder so when you do the compression, the presence of the binder will be very important to stick the granules together forming tablet. Is the integrity of the tablet, the masochic tablet, uh, its strength will also be affected by the presence of binder or adhesives. So is the more binder I add, the stronger the tablet will be. So if there is a question asking you what will be the job of the binders in a tablet formulation, we will say one, to uh, allow granulation to happen, two, to maintain tablet in integrity and mechanical strength. Type number three is the disintegrant or disintegrating agent. And we talked about this in capsules where we will need to use super disintegrants in case of capsule but the tablet do we need to use super disintegrants otherwise it will not work no in this case we can use either normal disintegrants that have been known since very long time it will work and also we can use the super disintegrants if you remember like cross carmelose cross povitone sodium starch glycolate these uh, super disintegrants can still be used in tablets to give fast disintegration. What do you mean by disintegration? Meaning it's the breakup of tablets. So once the tablet is swallowed with maybe glass of water and it reaches the uh, gut, the gastric juice and the fluid in the gut will allow the disintegrating agent to start working and breaking up the tablets. Taban, if you remember the uh, process or the mechanism by which uh, most disintegrant works, uh, most disintegrants work is by ish swelling or wicking, swelling or wicking. Additionally, we need to add uh, anti-adherence, glidants, lubricants, collectively they are referred to as lubricating agent. Lubricating agents are, can be anti-adherent, glidant, and or lubricants. These material uh, will allow uh, the uh, uh, tablets to be, ish, to be produced uh, without uh, weight variation and without sticking to the tableting machine. 
Now here I want you to do something. I want you to go back to capsules because I explained to you ish what do you mean by lubricants. And I talked about the three types of lubricants, lume anti-adherents, glidants and lubricants. Now this will be a homework that you should know the function of each one. Uh, شو يعني anti-adherent, glidant, lubricant and example of each. Uh, if you go to your uh, e-model, you will find the resource and I will show you the answer uh, here. Okay, if you go to your resource, what do you mean by glidant? This is the definition of glidant. And here we have examples, talc, colloidal silica, colloidal silica, low silicon dioxide that you studied with capsules. It can be used in very small quantity to for a dish, 0.2%. It's not a diluent. Huh? Diluent are used in very large or relatively large uh, proportion. Uh, we have also magnesium stearate. Uh, lubricant, lubricant. This is the function, and example of lubricant, lubricant is here, low steric acid or steric acid salts, we in the magnesium stearate. Uh, regarding the uh, anti-adherent, this is the definition, what, what the function of anti-adherent is, and we have example, magnesium stearate, utal, starch. Isn't this is a homework for you to do? Now to go back, in addition to this material, we have also optional uh, materials such as colorants, not every tablet needs to be colored, and flavorants, not every tablet need, uh, to be, uh, needs to be uh, flavored. Uh, usually flavored and sweetened uh, tablets, they are supposed to be administered in the oral cavity, okay? Uh, oral cavity, يعني في التم, for example, زي lozenges, زي chewable tablets, they need to be chewed or sucked inside the oral cavity. That's why you will need sweetening and flavoring agents. Okay, now we will talk about first type of uh, tablets. اللي هي, we call them multiply compressed tablets. Multiply compressed tablet. Why we say multiply? It means more than one compression. So we say multiply. Now there are two or two kinds of multiply compressed tablets. One is the multiple layer tablet. The other one is tablet within tablet. Is that? Let's look at both. What do you see here? You see here multiple layer tablets. This is a layer and this is another layer. Tablet within tablet, you see here there is a tablet and outside there is a tablet. So we call it tablet within tablet. The inner tablet we refer to it as core. It's another core. But the outer tablet, what do we refer to it as? We refer to it as shell. طيب, the question is, and it's also a homework, is what are the reasons for preparing such tablets? Why do we need to prepare such tablets? طبعاً, the answer you will find it in the following resource, which I uploaded uh, to eMoodle. Uh, tablet types, if you go multiple, compressed tab, Tablet, tablets, and here is the reason. Each layer may contain different, different medicinal agents separated for reason of chemical or physical incompatibility, staged drug release, or simply the unique appearance of layer tablets. يعني إيش? What does it mean? If there is chemical interaction between two drugs or two materials, then I need to separate them rather than mix them together. So I put one in a layer and the other one in another layer. Uh, also, this is the same in case of physical incompatibility. 
uh, whether chemical or physical. Now, stage drug release means when I want one layer to release the drug maybe quickly, let's say the other layer to release the drug more slowly to have extended release uh, product, for example. Or just the appearance. Some tablets uh, are produced as layer tablets, multiple layer tablets. And the reason is we want the tablet to appear as ish in different colors. So how can I make the tablet, one half of the tablet a color and the other one is another color? I can do that by preparing multiple layer tablets and I will show you that. Okay? So uh, let's go back uh, and talk about the details of how we can produce tablet within tablet or layer tablet. First, we're going to explain to you by showing you a video how layered tablets can be produced. Okay, I want you to look at this video. Here, what you see here, okay, we call it, we call these things the upper punch stations. Yani, it had a station carrying a, an upper punch, had an upper punch. Lishayfino here, what you see here, lihiye a die, shayfin a die, this is the die, lqalib yani, where a tablet gets compressed. Wuhon fi in the die cavity. يعني الفتحة اللي في الداي. What you will see here in this side, you will see a hopper. And if you remember, uh, the hopper is like a container or vessel holding the formulation. So this hopper will fill the cavities, the die cavities, اللي موجودة هون. And these upper punches, طبعا في هناك كمان lower punches. في upper وفي lower. Uh, and the lower and the upper, they will uh, compress the formulation inside the dye cavity. So the upper punch will descend, compressing the powder formulation, which is inside the cavity. But that's how we compression. Now more space will be left inside the cavity. Then this uh, dye and its cavity and the corresponding punches they will rotate, يعني كل هذا they will rotate, they will go to the next hopper. Then we have how many hoppers uh, we will have? We will have two hoppers. Each hopper will be responsible for a layer formulation. فبالتالي I will have two layers. I can have also three layers. If I want to produce three layers, in this case I will need three hoppers. Okay? Each hopper will contain its own formulation. طبعا الهوبر, the end of the hopper that feeds the dye cavity, we call it hopper shoe. نحكي قدم, ال, قدم الهوبر. Uh, it feeds the cavities. Okay, so let's talk about this one. This is the first hopper shoe. It will feed the dye cavity. And then it will be compressed at this stage as you see it here. بعدين ال upper punch will go up. All upper punches will go up. Then the dye cavities will uh, rotate to the next hooper. The next hooper it will be filled again, and then by the filling again it will be compressed again. فبالتالي how many compression here we will have? We will have two compression. Uh, this two compression will result in two layer tablets. Okay, and usually each layer. This is the usual way. You know, each layer will be of different color. Faizan, the tablet that you will see will be having ish, two different colors when it's produced. So I want you to pay attention to what I explained to you already and to the video that you will see because it will show you the whole process which I discussed. <laughs>
here you will see that after the tablets are produced, what will happen? Uh, the lower punches that you don't see now here, the lower punches, but the lower punches after that will be lowered to allow for the filling again. The same cycle will be repeated. The lower punch will descend. It will descend a little bit to allow for the formulation to be filled from the first hopper. Then compression will happen. Back in compression, it, it will be filled from the second hopper. And then this is the ejection part. For the ejection part, if you see here, the upper punch goes up. It goes up. The lower punch goes also up to locate the tablet at the surface. When it reaches this uh, obstacle here, the tablets get removed. Okay? Okay, so how do they prepare tablet within tablet? I will show you a video of that. But first, initially, they need to prepare uh, the core tablet. Isn't? This one needs to be prepared separately, okay, by another machine. Isn't first, prepare the core tablet. Now you need to uh, put this core tablet inside the shell. Now, how this is done? Let's look at the following video, and I will explain it uh, to you. Okay, now here, what do you see here? Here you see the core tablets in this one. Now the core tablets will be allowed to get through this pipe here. Shaifin had a pipe. This pipe allow one by one from this core tablet to be ish, located in holes. a rotating plate containing holes. Each core tablet will get to the hole in this rotating plate. Okay, watch here. The core tablets are getting placed in the holes that the plate contain holes. So it will be placed in each hole. Each hole will have one core tablet. Now this core tablet, this rotating plate, will take the core tablet into partially filled. This is the, these are the upper punches. Here we have lower punches. And this is the die. And we have the die cavity. Now these core tablets will be transferred. Where? La die cavity containing already partially filled uh, formulation in the shell. Okay, and it will not be completely filled, it will be partially filled. And the core tablet will be placed exactly in the center of the die, of the die cavity. Okay, so when it's placed in the center of the die cavity, what will be beneath uh, the core tablet when it's placed in the center of the die cavity? part of the formulation from the shell uh, tablet. Okay? Type. After that, the upper punch will come down, will descend. The upper punches will descend. Will descend. And pressure? Compression. And partial compression. Like half tablet. Like half tablet. A shell from beneath the core and then the core and this uh, together, they are compressed. Now, what happens after that? The die cavity, they, they are, the cavities are rotating. So they will go to the edge, to the next hopper. How many hopper here? We have two hoppers. One to fill uh, part of the shell uh, formulation. And the other hopper is to fill the other part of the shell uh, tablet formulation. Then you will have compression. Okay? Watch that.
Okay, so now we learned about uh, multiple or multiply compressed uh, tablets. Now we will talk about sugar coated tablets. Sugar coated tablets can be colored or uncolored. A sugar coated tablets, the coat itself is water soluble. So there is uh, no uh, long retardation of the dissolution of the tablets. The one, there will be some delay. Lacking, uh, it will be soluble uh, very quickly, will not take very long time uh, uh, to dissolve, so this will allow the drug to be released. Why we are coating the tablet with sugar? First, the sugar coating can uh, protect the drug from the environment, although I have to say that the environment itself can affect the sugar coat, and the sugar coat as I said, is water soluble. If the environment contains high humidity, it will start to dissolve the uh, sugar coat. Uh, another uh, advantage of using sugar coating is it can hide objectionable taste and odor. Sugar coating surrounding the uh, uh, tablet or the drug tab the tablet the drug in the tablet, okay, can protect it from objectionable taste. Yani the patient who takes the sugar-coated tablets will not feel the taste or the odor of the drug. Odor, yani smell. Now, additionally, uh, sugar-coated tablets, as you see here, uh, they are very well known to be ish, to be uh, uh, shiny. The reason for that, they add wax. Yani after they do the sugar coating, they wax the tablets. Wax like you when you do polishing. For example, shoe polishing, uh, shiny, it will be shiny. So the appearance uh, will be look will be looking good. Also, it allows the printing of, for example, drug name, logo, or uh, uh, the trade name on the tablet. Now, what is the problem with that? The problem will be a disadvantage. One, it takes long time. When we, uh, later on in uh, part two, we will talk about uh, uh, sugar, sorry, about coating in general, including sugar coating. And you will see that so, so much time and efforts are involved and it needs expertise the process and in someone specialized type is and it takes long time many steps needs expertise and another advantage is the increase in the size Maruf it's well known that sugar coating can increase the size of the tablet considerably طب شو بيأثر هذا لما يصير increase the size وبالتالي the weight بصير I need larger package and the shipping cost will be higher. Not only that, but even swallowing a larger tablet might become difficult for the uh, patient. The weight increase because of this sugar coat can be up to, uh, can be about 50% of the uh, weight. 50% yani of the tablet weight will be ish, will be about on sugar coat. It's like you are doubling the weight of the tablet. Faizan, it includes many steps. We uh, it needs time, it needs expertise, the size increases, and so the shipping cost uh, of the tablets. In comparing to sugar coating, we have film coated, coated tablets. Film. Now, the film is just like a skin to the tablet, okay? You know how the skin uh, holds our body. So the film coating 
عبارة عن polymer and maybe here you remember the enteric coating actually the enteric coating is a type of film coated tablets but the polymer might not be enteric it might be anything something else for example hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose which is water soluble it doesn't affect the dissolution of the drug significantly we uh, therefore it's, it doesn't have a function regarding the release of the drug فإذا الفيلم كوتينج is thin layer thin layer uh, if you compare this to sugar coating it's not thin it's thick actually coating it's thin layer of polymer that forms a skin like film around the tablet طيب usually it's colored فبالتالي the tablets usually uh, will have a color because of the uh, uh, film coating that we are applying وبالتالي if you compare it to sugar coating فهي less bulky not only that but uh, unlike the sugar coating the sugar coating one of its disadvantage actually is that it's not stable it can have cracks بينما الفيلم كوتينج usually it's more durable in the sense that the film itself hold holds the tablet tight كأنه it's like protective okay like our skin it holds the tablet and it's flexible فبالتالي any uh, uh, like shock to the tablet will not cause the uh, tablet to break easily is an it's more durable it's less bulky and also it's less time consuming يعني if you compare here it, it takes long time maybe one full day but if you compare it uh, to film coat if you if you look at the film coating uh, maybe it take one hour and a half where you are spraying the polymer solution or colloidal suspension of polymer you spray it into the tablet it gets uh, uh, the drops spread around the tablets and then you dry it okay and that's how you get the film another type of tablets اللي هي gelatin coated tablets example عليها اللي هو الجل كاب look at the tablet here this is a normal uh, tablet we call it caplet ليش how why we call it caplet because the shape is like a capsule فبنحكي له cap because the shape is like a capsule and you know when when you have this shape it allows the swallowing to be easier ولات لان it is a tablet prepared by compression now uh, what you see here is a trade name for paracetamol or acetaminophen اللي هو تيلينول now this one or this tablet can be enrobed يعني يغلف be gelatin as you see it here and also here now what you see here is what we call gel cap okay uh, it, it resembles the hard gelatin capsules in shape and look but actually this is an enrobed gelatin or gelatin that enrobes the the caplet okay as you see it here and there is no spaces between uh, between brackets body and the cap actually this is one piece it's like hermetically sealed similar to the ish to the soft gelatin capsule but looking like ish hard gelatin capsule as a lock now if you look here carefully what's the advantage of having this gel cap one compare it to capsule if i want to put the same quantity in hard gelatin capsules what will you be filling fil hard gelatin capsules the cap or the body you'll be filling ish the body and the compression is not hard بيكون ايش soft compression فبالتالي the cap will be empty يعني there is more space fil capsule that's why the size of gelatin coated tablets is smaller one third smaller than a capsule ليش حكينا why 
because in the capsule we are filling the bodies. But here, the whole thing is the drag, and the drag is occupying all the volume inside the uh, gelatin coat. Type, this is one. Second uh, thing, because it's smaller, that it facilitates swallowing, yani compared to hard gelatin capsule. Is and because it's smaller, swallowing will be easier, and that will be aided with gelatin cause slipperness. Yani, uh, it because of gelatin cause uh, coat, the gel cap or gelatin coated tablets can slip. Will be slippery. Yani, it will ish slip in the throat and into the stomach. Uh, another advantage compared to hard gelatin capsule no, here it's tampered evident now you cannot come here and say okay i want to remove the body from the cap no you cannot do this because all of it is one piece hermetically sealed okay uh, uh, that's why it's more costly than tablets and then uh, making a capsule because you need special machine for that طيب انتريك كوتد تابلتس this is a type as I said previously of film صح film كوتد تابلت بس ايش نوعها الفيلم اللي هو الانتريك كوتد so in this case what polymer will you use you are going to use a polymer صح but what polymer will you use if you remember you you, you need to use انتريك كو انتريك بوليمر انتريك بوليمر If you remember, we uh, have cellulose acetate phthalate and polyvinyl acetate phthalate, low PVAP. So you use this to coat ish the tablets. Now the question is, why you need to coat the tablets and make it make it enteric coating? طبعا the answer is homework. I will tell you what is the answer. The answer is because For in some cases, uh, the drug irritates the stomach, the aspirin. Many people, especially with heart condition, they take aspirin. And aspirin, one of the problem of aspirin that it irritates stomach. So instead of aspirin re being released in the stomach, I want it to be released in the intestine. Type this is one. Is a drug irritating ish the stomach. Number two. The stomach, with pH of the stomach, is degrading the drug. Yani, the pH condition of the stomach will destroy or degrade the drug. So I want to protect the drug in the stomach. So I need enteric coating. Type a third reason is I want most of drug release to happen in the intestine because. Uh, it's very well known that intestine absorption is much better than stomach. So if the release of the, of the drug starts in the stomach, you will end up with slow, uh, slow absorption of the drug. So you want all of the drug to reach the intestine so that the absorption can proceed uh, fast. طيب, let's uh, look at the answer here. Enteric coating. The answer, enteric coatings are employed when the drug substance is destroyed by gastric acid or is particularly irritating to the gastric mucosa or when bypass of the stomach substantially enhances drug absorption. Okay, let's go back and learn about the other uh, type of tablet, the bukel or sublingual tablets these tablets are usually flat or oval in shape okay flat uh, flat you know what do you mean by flat uh, oval in shape طبعا flat يعني مش curved يعني بعكس curved flat يعني uh, sorry curved يعني بيكون التابلت something like that this is curved tablet let me draw it for you This is curved tablet. This is flat tablet. Okay, so it's flat oval tablet. Oval, شو يعني بتكون بهذا الشكل. 
ك ك ك كشكل not كسرface السرface as I said is flat to be flat but the shape is oval يعني هون بكون little curved to to be like an oval طيب anyway uh, these tablets are supposed to dissolve either in the buccal pouch شو يعني منطقة البوكل اللي هي الوجنة اللي هي عند الخد من بس من جوا الماف okay it's from the oral cavity but at the side or beneath the tongue اللي هي sublingual tablet إذا في عنا نوعين two types of administration اللي هي البوكل و sublingual شوفوا هون this is buccal and this is sublingual طيب if it is buccal then the tablets are usually hard and it's allowed to dissolve slowly so that absorption from the buccal area can uh, sustain or can continue for a longer period of time if it is sublingual then the tablets are intentionally made soft to dissolve quickly promptly to give rapid effect if I want rapid effect I will not use the tablet في البوكال area لأن البوكال area absorption is slower compared to sublingual فبالتالي if I want something very fast زي النيتروغليسيرين النيتروغليسيرين this is a drug for angina victories اللي هو الخناق الصدري لما بكون عنده الواحد heart condition وما في enough Uh, uh, oxygen, not enough blood going to the heart, you feel like compression in, uh, in your chest. Uh, in this case, uh, you take sublingual uh, tablets, although it's not used to prevent, uh, sorry, if like if you have angina victories, it's not like you take the nitroglycerin to uh, get rid of that. Usually, you take it to prevent angina victories from happening. Type in this case, you want the absorption to be fast. Uh, in case of uh, buccal tablets, you want to use a drug uh, that you want its absorption to last for longer time. For example, in case of pain, if someone has pain, and you know most uh, pain uh, conditions. Uh, are not like just for a few seconds or a few minutes, it's usually continuous. So in this case, you want the drug to be absorbed over a longer period of time. Uh, uh, that's why when you use buccal tablets. Uh, okay, the thing is, to administer a drug in the buccal cavity might not be convenient, especially when we are talking about buccal tablets where you need to place the drug maybe for four hours. That's uh, a very long time. So what are the benefits from having buccal or sublingual uh, tablets? The benefit is if you have a drug that can be destroyed by gastric juice, by the stomach, or the drug undergo first pass metabolism. Yani, if I take the drug orally, it goes to the stomach and intestine, it, they get absorbed, the drug get absorbed, and then it goes to the liver, and liver might uh, remove a lot of the drug before it gets into the systemic circulation. You understand? Yani, we'd call that first pass metabolism. So if the liver will remove most of the drug, then the drug will not be effective orally. So what do I do to bypass a liver? I can administer it as buccal or sublingual or tablet. In this, in this case, the drug goes directly into the systemic circulation. Mish systematic, huh? Systemic circulation. So these are the benefits. Uh, here you see the uh, fentanyl uh, buccal tablets, and these are uh, opioid analgesic, musakkin yani. And here you see nitroglycerin, which is sublingual, that is used to uh, prevent angina victories from happening.
Okay, the other uh, type of tablets اللي هو lozenges or trochees. Now lozenges, maybe you are familiar with it. It's like this one, strepsils, which uh, are available uh, in supermarket, in pharmacies, etc. Uh, they are disc shaped, يعني, uh, circular, uh, usually uh, large. They contain the medicinal agent in a flavoring and sweetening uh, base يعني بيكون في flavor مع sugar base candy or sugar base lozenges can be made by molding إذا تتذكروا if you remember uh, molding uh, is the uh, secondary way for preparing uh, tablets يعني secondary I mean it's most tablets are prepared by compression Now lozenges can be prepared by compression or by molding. Usually, if it is prepared by uh, compression, we call it trochee. Okay, and the trochee is usually applied uh, to the compressed lozenges. Lozenges, uh, it's molding, but it can be also compressed. If when lozenges are compressed, we call it ish trochees. طيب the drugs that are in lozenges they are usually for local effect يعني for example when you have sore throat or you have uh, infection in the throat you use uh, lozenges because it contains antiseptic uh, medication it can also contain local anesthetic medication although for some lozenges it may contain a, uh, a, dr- a, dr- a drug for systemic absorption. They, for example, let's say vitamin C, etc. Uh, you, you suck the lozenges into your stomach and then it gets absorbed. Chewable tablets from the name chewable. Chewable, يعني you chew it في mouth. معناته, as the same case with lozenges, it has to be sweet, And usually flavor. So, so anything you keep in the mouth, they hit the the sublingual will book. And usually it needs to be of good taste. So the same thing with uh, chewable tablets. Uh, it contains uh, a medication that uh, you are supposed to chew or allow it to dissolve in the mouth. I mean, it's like sucking, like. For example, kefir lozenges, you suck it, you don't break it, you don't chew it. Hit the chewable tablets, you might uh, want to ish to suck it and allow the drug to dissolve in the mouth. Uh, usually the base is creamy, uh, flavored, and the sweetening agent uh, used usually is manitol. Uh, why they use manitol? Why it's commonly used in chewable tablets? The reason for that is manitol, when dissolves, it gives a cooling sensation. It makes the surrounding cooler. يعني في عنا material, when dissolves, make the surrounding ish warmer or hotter. وفي عنا some material, few materials, the opposite. منهم, uh, one of them, اللي هو المانيتول, which is a sweetening agent. When the, this dissolves in the mouth, by chewing and by uh, sucking or... Allowing it to dissolve, it gives a cooling sensation. That's why it's commonly used for chewable tablet as a sweetening agent. طبعاً, because chewable tablets are usually large, the same as in the case of strepsils, uh, uh, you cannot swallow it. But what you can do, you can chew it, as I said. And because you can chew it, it's suitable for children. And adults who have difficulty to uh, swallow uh, other solid dosage form. The other type of tablets, who will effervescent tablets, effervescent tablets. We already discussed about effervescent granules, and you prepare that in the lab. And if you remember, the main ingredients of effervescent granules, اللي هم إيش? Citric acid, tartaric acid, sodium bicarbonate. Now, 
If you don't want to use granules, then you can use tablets. Yani first prepare the effervescent granules, then compress the granules to make tablets, and you will have effervescent tablets. Do you need to add disintegrating agent in this case? No need for disintegrating agent because the bubble action that results from the reaction of acid and the base and the release of CO2 will assist in breaking up the tablet and therefore enhancing the dissolution of the drug. Immediate release tablets. Uh, now when we say immediate release tablets, we are talking here about the Ben Qusayn between brackets, the conventional tablets, the normal tablets. The tablet that does not have special uh, limiting, for example, special coating to limit uh, the dissolution of the drug, it's a normal one, like many uh, drug products. Yani Panadol is an example of them. Uh, so there is no special rate controlling feature for tablet. So they readily disintegrate and dissolve in the stomach. Now, I want you to compare what I said with another type of tablet, which instantly, yani quickly, very fast, super fast, instantly dis uh, disintegrating or dissolving tablet, or also we call them rapidly dissolving tablets, the RDTS. Is it different from immediate? Yes, it's very different. One, this instantly disintegrating or dissolving tablets, they are much faster in dissolving and disintegrating. Much faster. Superpower. Number two, the instantly disintegrating or dissolving tablets, they are orodispersible tablets. Yani, you do not swallow them intact like the immediate release tablets. No. You put them in your tongue and they will disintegrate and dissolve while in the or uh, on the tongue. They absorb the saliva and they dissolve very quickly. That's why they refer to them as orodispersible tablets. And this dissolving and disintegrating happens very quickly, maybe in about 10 seconds, but not exceeding one minute. That's why they are suitable for children and elderly who have difficulty in swallowing tablets. طيب, isn't there, there is a big different, difference between instantly disintegrating or dissolving tablets with immediate release tablets. طيب, how can we produce such tablets that dissolve and disintegrate very quickly? How can we produce them? Well, there are several methods. One of them is through lyophilization, and the other way is through soft direct compression, along with adding super disintegrants and small quantity of effervescent material. طيب, let me explain to you each one. Lyophilization is another term for freeze drying. Freeze drying is a method by which your preparation is frozen and using the right equipment, the freeze dryer, you'll be able to remove the liquid from the uh, solution or suspension. You'll be able to remove that, leaving what? Leaving something like a plug this plug is so porous, يعني في spaces, a lot of spaces, and hygroscopic. For once you put it in the mouth, in the mouth, it will absorb the saliva very quickly, dissolving the material. Okay, you got it? Isn't. Uh, freeze your formulation. First prepare it in liquid, freeze it. Okay. Uh, and then freeze dry it, يعني dry it while it's frozen. Okay, and uh, that's why they refer to it as uh, uh, sublimation. Shoot sublimation, اللي هي converting from uh, liquid, from sorry, from solid because you you freeze your material 
okay uh, and you remove the liquid you are you, you so the solid goes to vapor directly that's why they call it uh, sublimation from solid to vapor phase and you remove the liquid by a process of freeze drying the property of the material as i said is very porous very hygroscopic so once you put the tablet in the mouth in the mouth absorption of saliva or liquid in the oral cavity followed by dissolving the formulation very quickly by soft direct compression شوفوا there is soft في عنا direct compression let me tell you first about direct compression when you want to produce the tablets you can produce it by one of two ways either direct compression or indirect compression يعني suppose I ask you make tablets by uh, compression you will tell me okay I, I will either use direct compression or indirect. The indirect means that first you need to prepare granules and then compress the granules. And this is a common way. The direct means that you take your formulation and you compress them directly without producing granules first. Now it's very well known that direct compression will result in tablets that dissolve quickly. Okay, isn't that's why we are using the direct compression approach. Now soft, what do you mean by soft? Soft means that you do not apply the normal compression force. You apply a soft force. Yani, uh, the compression, uh, the pressure you apply to make the tablet is low. فبالتالي the tablet will break easily. في lyophilization also the tablet will break easily. Here it will break easily. That's why I need to be careful. صح ولا لا؟ But I need that so that it can dissolve and disintegrate very quickly in the tongue. طيب. In addition to applying direct compression or soft, I need to use super disintegrants so that it can uh, disintegrate very quickly in the mouth. And along with little amount of effervescent materials, who we know, who sodium bicarbonate or citric acid, okay, in order for it to absorb uh, moisture or humidity from the oral cavity or saliva from the oral cavity, and then disintegrate very quickly uh, and allowing the drug to dissolve. Is that clear? Uh, طيب, the question is, why the excipients, يعني other than drug that I use must be water soluble? طبعا, the reason is when I put the, the, the tablet uh, on the tongue, I don't want anything to prevent water from getting inside, saliva from getting inside. So everything must be ish, water soluble. Taban, what about the drag? Now, the drag might not be water soluble, but anything else needs to be ish water soluble so that it doesn't prevent the drag, uh, the, the saliva or the moist from getting inside. That is the answer for why. Tayyip, now another thing we need to put the uh, tablets in bubble type packaging like what you see here let me see if i have another photo okay this is like bubble packaging also the box itself the box nafso can contain uh, 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 bubble packaging uh, you know that when you don't want to break an item you wrap it with uh, uh, a bubble package صح ولا لا اللي فيه اللي هو الكيس اللي فيه البابلز كمان and all of this is to prevent ايش to prevent the tablet from breaking also when you want to take the tablet from inside like in this case you see this photo you want to take the tablet what is your usual way to take the tablet from the bubble package 
إنه usually you press on the tablet and the tablet will tear the uh, back of the package صح؟ Can you do this with uh, instantly disintegrating or dissolving tablet? No, you cannot. Why you cannot? The reason if you do a pressure on the tablet, what will happen to the tablet? It will break. صح ولا لا؟ Why it will break? Because we intentionally make it soft. And why we intentionally make it soft? Because we want it to dissolve rapidly في the uh, mouth. Uh, look at this one. This is oral dispersible tablets of olanazapine. Lhuwa, it's used for the schizophrenia conditions. طيب فإذا now we know about the package and why we cannot press the tablet. حكينا إيش? Because it will break if we press the tablet to remove it from the package. طب instead what do we do? We peel. We peel the packing of the package. من سوي له peeling لا the packing بهاي الطريقة. See, we remove the cover from here. ما من سوي we do not press on the tablet. فإذا أجاكم if you have a patient coming and he's asking for an oral dispersible tablet, you have to counsel this patient and tell him how to remove إيش the tablet. Extended release tablets. شو هاي ال extended release tablets? What is it? Here the tablet or the drug release will be happening over longer period of time than usual. يعني I am applying feature to the tablet. سواء on coating or something else. And I am applying a feature to the tablets that allow the medication to be released over extended period of time. That's why uh, sometimes it's referred to as sustained release tablets, sometimes it's referred to as controlled release tablets. Now some scientists, they say using controlled release tablets to describe extended release tablet is wrong. Why these scientists, they say it's wrong to uh, refer to extended release tablets as controlled release? They say the reason for this is all tablets that we produce are controlled release. Yani you will not produce uh, any tablet unless you know how the release of the drug will be. Then you are controlling the release of the drug by all tablets. That's why they say it's uh, wrong just to say it's controlled release for extended release. All tablets are controlled release. طيب هل الانتريك كوتينج الانتريك كوتينج هل الانتريك كوتينج is extended release انتريك هل هي extended release the answer is no إذا الانتريك كوتينج is not extended release Enteric coating is classified as delayed release. Huh? Delayed release. Is an enteric coating true to say it's delayed release tablet. And it's not ish an extended release. It's delayed. Lish delayed. Because I do not allow the drug to be released immediately in the stomach, but I design it or I intercoat it so that it gets released when the intestine. For a delay, I'm delaying that. Okay. طبعا here you have an example of glipizid extended release tablets تستخدم في type two diabetic patients. طيب the last uh, type of tablets اللي هي ايش؟ vaginal tablets طبعا from the name uh, it's to be inserted into vagina usually uh, when we say vaginal tablets we mean that it is prepared by compression يعني مش suppository مش بسري it's, it's uh, a tablet vaginal tablet prepared by compression and uh, the shape is usually a bullet shape, as you see here, it's like a bullet. 
and usually accompanied by a plastic applicator. So this uh, uh, vaginal tablet is inserted or fitted inside the applicator and then it's inserted when inside the vaginal area. But for what purpose you will need such uh, tablets? طبعاً, you will use usually in, or in most cases it's for bacterial infection زي uh, ما انتو شايفين here نستاتين uh, مثلا or uh, antifungal يعني it's used for as antibacterial or antifungal agents is the drug that we use here are either uh, antifungal or antibacterial agent uh, antifungal uh, uh, sorry antibacterial uh, agent uh, antibacterial زي ايش البكتيريا اللي هو هيموفايلس فاجينالس وفي عندنا uh, antifungal agents against the candida albican albicans طبعا uh, these tablets are not prescribed for uh, unmarried uh, ladies or girls. They are for uh, already married uh, women. Uh, they can be uh, uh, they can use a such uh, tablets, vaginal.